Hi, this is Max Messenger from Lynn Aerospace, and I am here for the fourth and final video in our Using Mission Planner video series. Uh, so in the first three videos, we covered uh, how to make flight plans all the way from the basics up through some more advanced stuff. And uh, as promised, uh, this video is going to cover sort of putting it all together. So how to connect to an aircraft, how to upload the flight plan that you've made to the aircraft, um, and then how to actually execute that flight plan. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. I just want to note that it was my intention to make this recording live at the field during an actual flight. Um, I tried to do that and my screen capture software was not cooperating. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is show you some of the stuff like connecting to the aircraft and uploading the flight plan, that sort of thing, uh, here in the shop, uh, connected up to a plane on the bench. And then... Um, I will uh, play back a telemetry log over here um, and that's how we'll see what this display looks like when the aircraft is in flight. So, okay, first of all, what we need to do is connect to the aircraft. So that's a pretty simple process. Uh, we need to make sure our telemetry radio is plugged into our computer and uh, on that telemetry radio we should have a solid green light and a rapidly flat rapidly and irregularly flashing red light that means that it is linked up to the air module on the plane the plane obviously uh, needs to be powered up for this process so uh, we select the COM port of the telemetry module here. For me it's COM6. If you have more than one COM port listed and you don't know which one to use, the simple way to deal with that is to unplug your telemetry module, which I'm going to do. And mm -hmm. with that unplugged, if we click here, we see that COM6 has gone away, so we know that that is our telemetry module. So if I plug that back in, now COM6 shows back up, so that's it. We want to make sure this is set to 57600. Uh, this is the data rate in bits per second of the connection. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and click connect, and this will pop up. It'll say connecting. Uh, it'll say done and then it will pop up another window that says getting parameters or getting params and it's going to scroll through all of these things it's downloading all the parameters from the aircraft that's what it's doing uh, when that is happening so once that goes away we are connected to the aircraft and we can confirm that by seeing that our data here is changing so our voltage is bouncing around a tiny bit that's normal uh, as our current draw bounces around a little, uh, airspeed and ground speed is changing with um, minute fluctuations in the GPS position. Uh, and if we click over to the quick tab, we see we have uh, small variations in altitude, which are giving us little tiny variations in ground speed. All of, all of this is normal. If you're getting wild swings in any of this stuff, on the ground uh, that could definitely be an issue but if your position or altitude is changing by a meter or even maybe two that's not too alarming if your yaw is varying some that that could be okay um, okay so now that we're connected up to the aircraft we want to load a flight plan so we'll go up here to the flight plan tab that we're familiar with we open this up and we will click uh, load WP file. Now, before I do that, notice that uh, so even though we're inside, my plane has picked up a GPS fix. So it knows we're here. And um, even though the, the flight plan I'm going to load is going to be way up to the north uh, west of us, it knows we're here in the city. 
Um, and it also has dropped this red circle. Uh, that's because there's an airport right here. As you can see, it pops up when I hover over at Smith Reynolds Airport. Um, and it's automatically going to draw a five mile radius around that airport. Um, and that's letting us know that flying where we are currently may not be the best idea uh, due to proximity to that airport. Um, but not to worry, uh, the flight that I'm going to load up is uh, well away from here. But anyway, so we can click load WP file up here. And that file is going to be right here. So this is one that I've saved earlier. It's going to ask me to reset home to loaded coordinates. Um, I always answer yes to this. Ultimately, home is going to be where the plane says it is, not where you say it is. So uh, if, you, if you always answer yes to this, then your home will always be in the correct spot. So just click yes, and uh, this flight plan pops up, and you can see that we have teleported up here to the northwest. Uh, if I click down here to pop up the waypoints list, we can see what our flight plan looks like. We have a takeoff at 25 degrees to 50 meters. Uh, then we have a series of waypoints to form this grid, all at 100. And then with waypoint 11, which is right here, we're dropping to 75 meters. And then we continue uh, that nice gentle descent all the way down to our landing point right here at waypoint 14, uh, which is at zero meters. Um, so this flight plan, as it is, is set up nicely for a Kestrel, for our Kestrel aircraft. We have a, about a 15% uh, grade down to our landing point, which the, the Kestrel does well with that. It has a fairly steep glide slope. Uh, if you're working with the Hawk or the Skywalker X8, you're going to want this to be quite a lot lower, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of um, 10 or really ideally less than 10 so closer to uh, 5 to 7.5 so if I were to modify this flight plan for the X8 I might change this uh, value to 10 meters now we get a nice low angle here and then I also want to revise uh, this altitude to give me a gentler slope here and I will revise this altitude uh, even a little bit lower than that because if I can keep all of these below 10 that will keep me from building up too much speed on my descent because to descend steeply in the uh, X8 or in the Hawk you're gonna have to uh, the, the plane is gonna have to put the nose in a in a nose down attitude which is gonna cause you to pick up some speed so uh, yeah so in in short for the Hawk and the X8 uh, make sure that these are 10 or less and this one is really as low as possible not less than 5 but quite low uh, for the Kestrel your landing grade can be about 15 and these can be uh, 10 to 15 okay so we have a flight plan that's ready to go I will click write WPs over here and all of these will be sent to the aircraft and we hit read WPs. It says that it's going to clear the existing mission. That is OK. It is going to clear what is currently on the computer, but it's going to replace that with what is on the plane. So if the flight plan uploaded successfully, uh, then when we download it back down, we're going to get an identical flight plan. So if everything went well, nothing should change. So I'll click OK. All of this will come back down. And it's going to ask me again if I want to reset home, because before it reset home to what was saved in the flight plan, which is right here. And now when I'm reading back, it's going to reset home to where the plane thinks home is. So I'll click yes. And now you can see home has bumped over here to the plane. And then our flight plan is out here. And uh, while this flight would be ill-advised because it's over some uh, some congested area uh, we can see up here that our total distance is still even with this big transit it's only uh, 46 kilometers so this is actually uh, a doable flight 
uh, it would be it would be interesting, but it it is possible that's well within the range of the uh, the X8. Okay, so here's our flight plan. It's all loaded up. We have written it. We have read it back to confirm that it's been written correctly. We can click back over to flight data, and now in flight data, those waypoints show up as well. Um, a few things. I like to, you notice that if I drag away here, after a couple seconds, it's going to reset the map onto the plane, the crosshair there. Uh, this auto pan checkbox turns that on and off. So if I uncheck auto pan, I can move this and I can fix the map on a position. Uh, if I click auto pan back on, it's going to keep, it's going to maintain the plane uh, in the center of this map. Okay. So now that you've seen how to connect up to the aircraft and how to, uh, how to load up a flight plan, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect and I'll show you the telemetry log. So we'll disconnect here, go to telemetry logs, I'm going to load this log. And now the log is playing back. So this is... You, what you're seeing here is exactly what happened uh, when we went and flew this flight plan the other day. So uh, when I connected up, the aircraft was armed. Uh, and then to show you how, I, I disarmed the aircraft. So if you click on this button right here, it will, uh, prompt, uh, it will arm the aircraft. And if you click on it again, uh, it will prompt you if you're sure you want to disarm it. And it'll disarm it. So right there. Throttle disarmed, uh, if you click this button, uh, that will toggle arm and disarm the aircraft. Throttle so throttle armed, throttle and we pop up armed right here. And then the other thing you'll notice is that after a few seconds, all of this is going to go away. So armed has gone away. Throttle armed will also go away. Uh, so, so that's important to note. If you have nothing up in this area, um, that means your aircraft is armed. If it is disarmed, then disarmed will be shown right here in red. The disarmed text does not go away. It stays up. Um, so that, that's a quick and easy way to know uh, what the arming status of your aircraft is. So then uh, at this time I was, you can see here, my flight plan changed. At this time I was loading the flight plan up to the aircraft. So there it's all appeared. And then I was uh, reading that flight plan back from the aircraft. And once that is written and read, um, it's time to go ahead and launch the aircraft. So uh, the aircraft is armed. Uh, we had it sitting on the launcher. The bungee was tensioned. Uh, everything was hooked up. Um, you go through the uh, waypoint list here. After we read this back and confirm that all of our waypoints are still correct, altitudes are correct, uh, waypoint types are correct. Really important to make sure that we start with a takeoff and end with a land. Uh, if you are missing one of those, you're probably going to have uh, a bad situation on your hands. Um, if you're missing a takeoff, either the motor is not going to activate or uh, it's going to try to immediately go into an RTL, which could cause a crash, would likely cause a crash. And uh, the land point, if you don't have that, when it reaches the final waypoint, it's going to go into an RTL. Uh, and then you're going to have to figure out how to get it back on the ground, which uh, can, can be somewhat difficult. I'll show you. Uh, you can upload a new flight plan in flight. So if you did have a situation where you realize you didn't have a landing point, you could put the aircraft into a loiter, upload a new uh, landing flight plan that just had an approach pattern like we talked about in one of the previous videos and then you could go back into auto and uh, have it follow that flight plan. So here in just a second uh, the aircraft is going to switch into auto 
So that's done from the RC transmitter. So the right there, the pilot flipped a switch to put the aircraft into auto. It's showing that it's heading to waypoint one, which is our takeoff. And then just here momentarily, uh, we're going to launch the aircraft. So we pull the lanyard on the launcher quick release and the aircraft will shoot up into the air, which is what we have right here. So we see we're climbing and we're heading to waypoint two. Our altitude is right here. So we're at 60, 70 meters climbing up to that 100 meter waypoint. We're, we have a nice airspeed of 16, which is what our set point is. Um, it is going to wander around a little bit. We did have a little bit of a breeze, uh, but 16 to 20 is, is good. You can see our battery voltage drops some when we take off. So we have 10 to 12 amps of current draw. Uh, so when we draw a current from the battery, it causes the voltage to drop. So we've already dropped half a volt. Um, but that's totally normal when we put the battery under load. And you can see we have 95% of our battery capacity remaining. You can see we have a 3D GPS fix. Flight mode is auto. This is the number of meters to waypoint 6. So we're flying along and that number of meters is decreasing to waypoint 6. Um, and then we have these white circles here uh, which indicate the waypoint radius. So when it breaches this circle, it is going to consider waypoint six complete and turn right toward waypoint seven. And you can see that right there. It started turning right here as soon as it breached uh, that radius. You can see our compass uh, heading changing. Uh, our roll and pitch angle indicators are all right here. Now, um, what I'm going to do is change the aircraft into loiter mode. So this button right here, if we click Motion this, it's going to change the flight mode into loiter. Now, you notice that we're still flying to waypoint 8. Uh, and if I were to click auto and change it back into auto, the aircraft would just turn and continue right along this flight path to waypoint 8 and finish the flight plan. Um, but as long as it's in loiter, it's just going to circle that point where I clicked the loiter button. So we're just going to circle around. We're going to maintain the altitude where we already were. So it's not going to climb or descend. It's just going to remain at that altitude uh, and circle. And then here in just a minute, I'm going to change the waypoint number. So if I go to this drop down, I can say, OK, I want to change to waypoint 3. I want to go back and refly this portion of the mission. Something happened, or I just want to fly it again, or maybe I want to jump forward. I could select a different waypoint. But you know, so let's say I, I want to go back to waypoint 3. I can click there. And then if I click this Set WP button, that is going to change the current waypoint. And now you can see I've done that. And we have waypoint 3 indicated right here and not waypoint 8 anymore. So drop down, click set WP. It's going to change the indicated waypoint. And then when I click auto right here, we're going to roll out of this loiter. And we're going to fly straight back here to waypoint 3. And once I breach waypoint three, it's going to turn and it's going to come right down towards waypoint four. So we can go to any waypoint in the flight from this drop down right here. If I were to do zero, that would essentially be an RTL. But if you want to do an RTL, it's much easier to do it right here. There's this RTL button. So we turn, we get back on this flight path. We're headed back to waypoint four. A few other things of note. We have our uh, current time of day right here. So you can use this to track your time in air. Uh, or you can right click in the HUD, click user items. We can click time in air. 
right here, and I can change this to say something uh, more user-friendly like flight time. I click OK, and now our flight time shows up right here. You can see that uh, this aircraft has been in the air for almost uh, five minutes. We have the signal strength of our telemetry modem. You can see that it's 99%. We're only a few hundred meters away from the telemetry radio. If it were less than 97 or 98, that would be abnormal uh, for how close we are here. 50%, um, if, if you see it get down to 50%, that's getting quite low. Um, below 30 to 40, you're going to start to get intermittent losses of telemetry connection. Uh, so just keep that in mind. You know, the aircraft is fully capable of flying without telemetry, but you have no ability to control it or track it uh, once it leaves that telemetry range. So just be aware of that. Now, um, something I can do if I want to, I'm actually going to pause this real quick uh, since I got on that tangent. Um, let's say I want to loiter, but I want to loiter uh, somewhere over here. I don't want to loiter right here. I want to fly out here and loiter. Uh, maybe there's an aircraft coming through, uh, a manned aircraft. I need to descend and avoid that or just avoid it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click out here. I can click fly to here out and it's going to ask me to enter the guided mode altitude. 100 is good for us so I'll click OK and then I could click fly to here and if I click fly to here this is what will happen so right here you see mode change to guided that's what happens when we click fly to here it's gonna change the flight mo mode to guided and you see this guided mode point shows up out here this is a, essentially just a waypoint that the aircraft will circle indefinitely uh, until you take it out of guided mode or we could give it a guided a new guided mode point so I could click back over here click fly to here and it would it would move that guided mode waypoint um, but that can be useful you know maybe you need to uh, ascend or descend and change position uh, whatever the case may be uh, maybe you want to fly over to something and observe it you can do that uh, you do all of that using guided mode. So you can see now we're in guided mode. We're just going to circle around uh, until I give it another command. And now you can see right here we're headed to waypoint 8. So if I wanted to, I could hit auto. And if I hit auto right now, we're just going to fly right back over to waypoint 8 and we're going to finish this flight plan out. Or Maybe uh, we're getting towards the end of the flight. The battery is getting a little low. I don't think I can make uh, the remainder of the flight plan. Obviously, in this case, we have plenty of battery. But if that were the case, I could go here. And you can see that it, I've already done this. It's changed uh, in the playback. But I could go to way, waypoint 11, click set WP and now we're heading to waypoint 11. So it's going to cut out uh, the remainder of the flight plan and go to the first waypoint in the approach. So uh, that's going to take us out of uh, the rest of the flight plan and get us towards the landing. Um, so it's really important in this case to be sure not ever to jump straight to the landing point. If I were to jump straight to the landing point from here, the aircraft would turn and land, for one, it would land almost perpendicular to our runway here, which is not ideal um, because it that cuts down a lot on our landing room. You never uh, land perpendicular to, perpendicular to a runway. It would also cause us to have a really steep descent. So I've selected waypoint 11. We click auto right here. We're back in auto. You can see we're descending. This blue bar is the climb rate, or in this case, descent rate. Uh, so that's negative, so we're descending. This green bar is the altitude set point. So you can see that green bar is slowly decreasing. Uh, 
and we're cruising around we're gonna hit this and we're gonna turn on to our final approach Heading to waypoint 13, we're still descending nicely. And then after waypoint 13, when the aircraft is out here and about two meters above the ground, my pilot is gonna pull the pitch stick back to bring the nose up. We can see that right there. And you see mode change to manual. Uh, so we pull the pitch stick back to cause it to cause its descent to slow and cause us to burn off some airspeed before we touch down and uh, we're going to change flight mode to manual that way the aircraft doesn't think something odd has happened and try to throttle up and fly off or anything like that as soon as we touch the ground change the flight mode to manual and then you'll see here in a minute throttle disarmed so uh, we would click this disarm button uh, and we'll have disarmed pop up and you'll see what I mean about uh, this does not go away um, with time whereas armed does this will stay here at all times when the aircraft is is disarmed um, a few other things I talked about you know maybe the battery is getting low uh, just so you know what does what does low battery mean um, for us, low battery is really going to be about 14.3 volts right here. Uh, that's when we really need to be fairly close to landing. When this reaches 14 volts, we really want to go ahead and be on the ground. We don't like to push it past 14 volts. Um, part of that is because you're not leaving yourself much reserve uh, in case something happens and you can't land immediately. And then part of that is just not putting too much strain on the batteries and not wearing them out faster than you need to. So now you can see the, the aircraft is bouncing around uh, because it's being carried back to uh, the takeoff position. Um, but yeah, so make sure that uh, you're on the ground by 14. Really, if you can land sooner than 14 volts, uh, that that's better. Um, you know, really just make... Uh, make the flight plan to cover what you need to cover and uh, if you're in the air and you need to abort uh, you know you can always just jump to that first waypoint in the approach click set WP just like we did here and it's gonna fly right there circle around and come into land another thing uh, I may have mentioned this before this approach should always be into the wind uh, or if it has to be crosswind that's okay. Um, a crosswind approach is is fine if you don't have any other option. Uh, but if at all possible, landing should always be landing and takeoff should always be done into the wind. Uh, they should absolutely never be done downwind. Uh, so, like I said, crosswind is acceptable but not ideal. Uh, downwind is never never a good idea unless it's just a one to two mile per hour wind uh, you know if it's if it's light and variable and it's hard to really fly with it then that's fine but if there's any consistent wind you need to be uh, landing against it okay so that is all I have um, thank you for watching I hope this was helpful uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. And yeah, I will uh, probably be back with some new videos uh, about the actual aircraft uh, assembly, maintenance, uh, that sort of thing shortly. So thanks for watching.